Welcome to my another PHP PDF tutorial video. In this chapter, I'm about to demonstrate and explain how to make a table in PDF with the ability of text wrapping, using multi-cell. In chapter 7, I have explained how to do this. And we can only do the text wrapping on one cell because we do the calculation manually. This time, instead of doing the calculation in the script, we will using a custom library. So with this, we should easily implement text wrapping on every cell. And you can combine any custom libraries such as barcode and header footer into your own custom library. I have prepared the custom class in my GitHub repo. The link should be in the description. Simply just copy this file, make a new PHP file in your web directory then paste the content. Here I have prepared beforehand, a mock JSON file with 1000 datas to be displayed containing ID, first name, last name, email, gender, and address. Then make a new PHP file that would be our PDF script. First, include the custom library file, not the original FPDF library file. The original FPDF library will be called by our custom library. Then make a new object from our custom library. Then add a page like usual. And set the font we're gonna use. Here I use Arial with 14 point in size. Now, we will be using our custom library. First, set the width of each column using setWidths method with array as parameter. We need to define the width of every column in array fashion. For now let's just guess the width. Next, set height of the line using setLineHeight. We need this to calculate the required multi-cell height. This is the height of text lines, not the rows. Then load the JSON file. Obviously, you can use data from database. Just change the script accordingly. Then loop the data. To write the datas, we use row method with an array as the parameter. The array should contain the value of each cells, and the number of element should match with the array in our setWidths method. Then finally output the PDF. And let's see the result. Sorry, it seems I forgot to change the FPDF library path. In this tutorial, I still use FPDF version 1.7, so let's change that. Let's adjust the width a little.
and add the table heading using standard cells. Let's make it bold to make it looks different. And that is how we use this custom library. Now, I will explain how this library works. You can skip this part if you want, but continue watching it is recommended. This library needs the original FPDF library, so we include it first. Then declare the class, extending the FPDF library. In this part, we define the variables to store the widths, text alignment, and line height. This is the setter method for the cell's width, which is an array of integer. This is the setter method for alignment, we didn't use it in our tutorial before, so let's try this now. Same as set widths, we define each cell's alignment in array fashion. This is the setter method for line height which is used to calculate the cell height. And this is the row method to write the content. This method first find out the greatest line number from every cells in whole row. Using internal method called NB lines to determine the number of lines needed to render the text. Then determine the height of the cell by multiplying the line height with greatest line number. Then break the page if the content overflow the page. So no rows will be truncated. Using check page break method which I will explain later. Then draw the cells of current row. With respective width. Alignment which we have just defined earlier. Save the current position, this is to determine where to draw the border and next cell placement. Draw the border by drawing a rectangle. In fact, we are not using cells border at all. So we use rectangle to make it looks like it have borders. Print the text using multi-cell. You can see here that the border and the cells is not related at all. Then set X and Y for next cell.
and make a new line. Check page break method is using Y position and page break trigger property to determine whether the cell will overflow the page. And if it does, a new page will be created first. If we omit this, then the rows will overflow in current page thus overloading this page. Because we use multi-cell which won't automatically break the page. And finally NB lines method to calculate the required cell number. It involves looping through whole text character by character. This concludes this chapter of tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please kindly support me by liking my videos and subscribing this channel. Thank you very much. See you next time.